So hi guys, my name is Mansi Anand, and I welcome you to this series called RBI Twenty Four Seven. So as you must be knowing that in this series we discuss a set of five questions that belong to economics and finance, current affairs, and guys, if you are preparing for competitive exams, then this video can be useful for you, right? So before moving to question number one for today, I would like to ask you guys. to subscribe to our channel so if you are watching our video for the very first time then do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do not forget to press this bell icon which can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up you can also join our telegram group and post your doubts and queries there so that we can get in touch with you whenever you have a doubt right so are you ready for question number 1 so here is your question number 1 So this question says a system where there are multiple investors who come together on fintech platforms to invest in properties jointly is known as dash. So basically, it talks about some system of joint investing in properties. Let us move ahead to the solution, and the solution is option A. Option A means fractional investing, right? So see, traditionally we assume that if we want to invest in real estate or if we want to invest in property, we should have a lot of money, right? Then only you would be able to buy a good, uh, a good quality real estate investment that is going to give you benefit. You can put it out on rent and then have the uh, and have and receive rents on uh, periodic payments, right? Or you can benefit from the appreciation of the property or the increase in price which happens with time, right? So. but see the point is not everyone has that kind of money but let's say if you are such an investor who does not have this much of money but still you want to go for investment into real estate now what can you do right with the advent of technology we have such platforms such fintech platforms like strata where people can come and pool their resources and then buy a stake in a property right so basically just as so you can as you can uh, compare it to a kind of mutual fund in mutual fund what happens is there are many investors all of them provide money and this pool of money is invested into different kinds of investments right so same is the uh, similar is the setup of these fintech platforms who collect the money form a pool and then this pool is invested into different kind of properties right so this type of investment is known as fractional investing because you're not uh, buying one property uh, you're buying a fraction of it right so fractional investing now let us know some more things about fractional investing okay these platforms so here you can see the process uh, how these platforms work or what is their uh, what, what is the process of their operation right so first of all these platforms they look for properties that can grow in value or that have any income generating capability right so they look for uh, properties on the basing of pricing location that where the property is located if it is located at a good area the uh, the uh, the nearby areas are nice and it has uh, it has uh, it has uh, good locations uh, 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 near it like it has mall it has a mall nearby or it has schools hospital so basically such an such a property can be a can be an attractive investment for someone who is looking to put out that property on rent right so uh, the location the price and the scope for capital and rental appreciation right that what is the potential for growth in this particular area right so there are many areas like if we talk about delhi right uh, the, the northwest part of delhi the rohini pitampura region there like if you go some 20 30 35 years back uh, it, it it was not so developed it was basically it was basically fields that were later developed into residential uh, residential areas right so people who bought property that time they are now having benefit of capital appreciation they got really good money from they they are having really good value for their investments right so 
such are the factors on the basis of which these platforms decide that where they want to buy a property once they decide it they list the property right and after that they raise money on the basis of this property they show it to their potential investors that see this is the property we are looking to invest in and if you want to invest here then you can pull in money right platforms have a minimum investment limit let's say there is an investment platform which has a limit of 20 lakhs that you should at least have 20 lakhs see 20 lakhs seems like a big amount but for property investment it is not a very big amount right so they usually have a minimum investment limit but the amount depends upon the number of investors so if there are lot of investors then there can be a lower minimum limit also after that once they get requ the required number of investors they buy the property using a special purpose vehicle so i think we have discussed the concept of spv uh, many times in our previous sessions so uh, briefly an spv means an entity which is established with a specific purpose and what is the purpose here the purpose here is to buy the property right so in case the platform is not able to get required number of investors let's say uh, they 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 have chosen a property they they have showed it to their potential investors but investors are not showing any interest you can look at it uh, just like an ipo right so they are showing this growth potential they are telling about that you can make so much money in future but that depends upon investors that whether they show interest or not if they show interest then fine they buy the property but if investors are not interested then what they do is they the token money is paid back with interest so the investors who have paid some money but the required amount is not raised then the people who have paid money they get their money back along with the interest so and now how do, how do they earn money they earn money by putting this property out on rent and also see the people who are investing money into such platforms they can have a return in the form of dividends and how does this this platform raise this dividends how how does it make money it puts out the property on rent and have the rental receipts right and they use that money to pay their investors who have invested their money as a form of dividend right either they form uh, they pay them in the form of interest or dividend or they pay it in the form of compulsorily convertible debentures so compulsorily convertible debentures means uh, debentures which can be converted into equity shares after some point of time or uh, after a particular date in future right so uh, either they get money or they get shares investors they can also benefit so let's say there is an investor and earlier he thought that this property is very good and let me invest in this using this fintech fintech platform but now the investor has changed his mind and he thinks no this this is not going to benefit me or this is not as per my needs then <coughs> the investor can also sell the, their stake of the or their ownership in that particular property and if that has appreciated if it has raised in value then obviously the investor makes profit so they can also benefit from the appreciation in the property when they exit from the investment so this is the concept of fractional investing in real estate but see this is also a very risky proportion especially uh, for the retail investors because 20 lakhs we, we just uh, learned about that such platforms have a minimum investment limit which might be very small for institutional investors but can be really huge for a retail investor and they might put their hard earned savings or their entire life savings into such investments so care should be taken because it's it's risky because it involves huge amount of money although it provides you with a chance to invest in such properties that you might not be able to buy or afford or and have a benefit of their appreciation in their value but this is also very risky right so um, risk analysis should be done beforehand before investing into such avenues moving ahead to the next question so here is question number two for the day and it says which of the following is not an advantage advantage of fund of funds five statements given to you you have to tell the one which is not an 
advantage right so this fund of funds topic this has been cited by one of you in the comments so i hope uh, this helps you out moving ahead to the correct option and the correct option is option a <coughs> option a which means these funds are cheaper for the investors as speed fees paid is minimal this is not an advantage now first let us learn about what is the meaning of fund of funds right so i think the name gives you some idea it is a fund that comprises of other funds so basically what is a fund a fund is a pooled a a pool of money that invests that money into different kind of investment a mutual fund is all is is uh, also a fund because it is taking money from many investors and then investing it into different kind of securities right so a, a fund is simply a pool which has taken money from many investors and now it invests into different type of investments right so a fund which invests into other funds is known as a fund of funds very simple here you can see a fund of funds also known as multi manager investment pooled investment fund that invest in other types of fund so etf and etf is also a fund exchange traded funds there is an etf so the, usually what an etf does is etf uh, tracks and uh, etf tracks a particular index but there can be an etf that puts money into different etfs right so basically they are not putting money into securities or into different types of investment avenues but they are putting their money into other funds then these these funds are putting money into different avenues right so let's say this etf x funds this tracks sensex y tracks nifty z tracks snp right so so the money of this etf a or the investors who have put their money into this etf a is not only going into xyz but it is indirectly going into sensex nifty and snp right so it provides you with a lot of diversification uh, and another level of diversification right so this is a fund of fund structure i hope now you understand the meaning now coming to the uh, okay coming to other details they usually invest in other mutual funds or hedge funds basically in other funds fof may be structured structured as a mutual fund a hedge fund a private equity fund or an investment trust so it can be a fund of funds can have a motto to invest into different kind of mutual funds or to invest into different types of hedge funds or to invest into different type of uh, different funds who invest into private equity firms right so they can be various type of funds after that it can be fettered meaning that it only invest in portfolio managed by one investment company if the money is being uh, money is going into one investment company then it is fettered otherwise it is unfettered if it if it invests in external funds controlled by other managers from other companies right so this is a basic introduction of fund of funds here you can see the pros and cons okay so pros as i just told you ultimate in diversification as i just give you an example not only investing in one uh, fund that is tracking a particular index but you can put your money into various type of funds which are tracking different indices right so uh, a whole new level of diversification this is one of the major advantages professional management because uh, if we look at this example fund etf a is managed by a professional manager after that etf x is managed by a professional manager then y then z right so after that so guys you can read these statements here and try to connect it with the pros and cons we just learned right so i'll be back in a second so i hope now you are able to connect the pros and cons with these statements right so diversification professional management expertise 
elevation of risk <coughs> and volatility due to this added diversification the risk is less the volatility is less and exposure to such assets that you might no, no, not be able to uh, uh, that you might not be able to afford by small investors right because there are many companies whose shares are very expensive and retail investors might not think of investing into them but through a mutual fund they can invest a small corpus they can invest some uh, small amount of money and some proportion of that small amount of money goes into that big company basically they are not they don't know where their money is going so that is the benefit of pooling the money you can access those investment avenues which can be beyond the affordable capacity of small investor now what are the cons the cons are first of all additional layer of fees because obviously since there are many managers who are managing these funds at different level the fees is going to be higher right risk of overlap in holdings there might be possible that there are many funds which are uh, so there might be so let's try to understand it with the help of example there is a fund a investing into x y z so basically there might be some securities which this fund x also holds and this fund y also holds so there can be some overlap in the holdings difficulty in finding qualified managers obviously since there are many levels at which managers are required uh, they they can be difficulty to find out that which manager is doing good and which one is not doing good right okay so here is your third question which says which of the following banks will benefit from a surge in equity capital market deals right five types of banks given to you you have to select which one of them is going to benefit if the if uh, the number of equity capital market deals it rises in the economy moving ahead to the solution and the solution is option d option d means only four that means investment banks so if e equity capital market deals they rise in number it leads to growth in benefit for investment banks and how is it so see what is the meaning of these ecm deals equity capital market deals it refers to different things can be a rights issue can be a bonus issue right can be a qualified institutional placement basically a deal which helps a company to raise money from the market comes under the purview of ecm deal so it's it uh, it it involve it in includes a lot of a lot uh, a lot of deals a lot of type of activities that take place in a business right so these ecm deals whenever they happen companies who are doing them they require the advice and services of many investment banks so that is why when these deals are going to rise in number the profit for this investment these investment banks is also going to rise right so retail banks they provide services to small investors small finance banks works on smaller level cooperative banks have a totally different structure regional rural banks very restricted in their geographical capabilities right so investment banks are the banks which are getting ban benefited by a rise in number of ecm deals right here you can see i think we have discussed most of the points here so surge in equity capital market deals held up fees for investment banks in 2020 right now what is the meaning of ecm deals i just told you includes uh, qualified placements rights initial public offering and block trades also right basically all the deals which are helping a company to raise money and for that in such deals the participants are investment banks because they provide services like book building or trying to analyze or find a particular value at which share should be launched in market right they they analyze the market and then help the companies they advise them that what should they do or sometimes they provide the services of underwriting so they perform a plethora of services like broker dealers retail investors venture capitalists private equity firms etc after that so basically in this particular year in this corona year 
there have been uh, there has been activities in ecm market because many companies they have come out with their ipos they have tried to raise money from the market because obviously they are in financial distress they need to raise money which has uh, provided business which has provided work to investment banks here you can see some statistics about it so this surge in ecm deals helped cushion the fall of other businesses right so it has acted as a boon for investment banks question number 4 for today which says a dash refers to the initial sale of fund shares issued by an investment company to its investors so if there is an investment company and it is issuing shares of a fund to its investors initially then what what is it going to be called moving ahead to the correct option for this question and the correct option is option e option e means new funds offer see new funds offer is quite similar to an ipo right but when an investment company comes out with a new investment and it is seeking investors to invest in it let's say there's uh, there is a mutual fund company that is coming out with a scheme and it is asking investment investors to subscribe to it it is then we can say it is coming up with a new funds offer right so it is similar to ipo but in the market of funds usually mutual funds moving ahead okay new funds offer occurs when fund is launched allowing the firm okay allowing the firm to raise capital for purchasing securities right now this because this is an investment fund this is going to buy securities and that is why it needs money it needs investors to pull in <coughs> okay so guys if you remember we talked about that how mutual funds they were telling sebi that please raise the limit so earlier sebi allowed mutual funds to invest into foreign assets with the limit of 300 million dollars for every mutual fund this this is for like one individual mutual fund with an industry cap of 7 billion dollars so one mutual fund one asset management company cannot uh, uh, could uh, was not able to put their assets into foreign invest foreign uh, asset there so one asset management company was not able to put their money into foreign assets beyond the limit of 300 million dollars and all the asset management companies they should not have invested more than 7 billion dollars so these were two limits now amc since they uh, they thought that foreign investment is going to boost their profit is going to add to their valuations that is why it was seeking a raise in this limit from sebi which in which they have been successful sebi has raised it to 600 million dollars basically doubled it for per mutual fund house right this industry limit 7 billion uh, 7 billion dollars this is unchanged after that mutual funds can invest in overseas etf subject to a maximum of us 200 million dollars per mutual fund but if see whatever one mutual fund is investing into foreign country it should not exceed the limit of 600 million dollars but its etf investments into foreign etfs this should not uh, exceed the limit of 200 million us dollars so this is a limit for foreign etfs and for this the industry wide limit is 1 billion us dollars so the entire mutual fund industry should not have invested more than 1 billion dollars into foreign etfs i think we all are clear with the meaning of etfs so etfs i think we have discussed it many times in uh, detail so guys if uh, any one of you is not aware of the meaning of etf you can ask for that videos link we are going to provide you with the link and you can watch it right so this is the limit after that a mutual fund launching a new fund offer basically if a mutual fund is coming up with a new mutual fund offer it would have to disclose the details basically there is a mutual fund company who is thinking to launch a new scheme and using the funds of scheme uh, money raised in that scheme they are going to invest in foreign assets then they would have to disclose the details see intending to invest overseas will be required to specify 
the amount that it is going to invest outside India and use the limit within six months. So they will have to tell the uh, authorities that what is the limit of putting assets into foreign what, what is the amount that they think they are going to invest in foreign markets and they will have to follow it within six months right so this is about the new changed rule after that and yes there was one thing more 50 million dollars would be reserved for each mutual fund individually basically out of this 7 billion dollars which is for the entire industry they are reserving 50 million dollars for each mutual funds basically they do not want the bigger mutual funds to use most of this limit of 7 billion dollars because see if uh, let's say there are 40 or 50 mutual fund companies in India if each one of them uses this limit of 600 million dollars then obviously the industry limit is going to be breached that is why they have put some reservations that 50 million dollars is reserved for each mutual fund right and apart from that whatever is left so you take the number of mutual fund companies multiply it with 50 million dollars that is the amount which is reserved out of the 7 billion right apart from that whatever is vacant can be used by any company so any company can use the vacant part and 50 billion dollars of their uh, sorry 50 million dollars of their own share right so this is so this has been done so uh, every mutual fund gets to get a share of this increased limit right moving ahead to the next question so this is the last question for today which says mr sharma is a 60 year old man who has recently retired from sbi he has got a hefty amount on retirement and wants to put his money into a scheme which is going to provide him with a regular monthly income for his entire life so that he is not dependent upon his children for his day-to-day -day expenses. Out of the following, which plan do you think is best for him? Moving ahead to the solution and the solution is option B. Option B means that Mr. Sharma can go for an annuity plan. So we are going to discuss what is an annuity plan and why is it suitable for Mr. Sharma. Okay. See, Mr. Sharma is a person who is in the later years of his life. So that is why they need to have a plan which is safe and secure because at, at the age of 60, they are not greedy for returns, but they want, they want a scheme or a plan which can provide them with a return on a regular basis or can provide them with fixed timely payments, right? So basically he wants regular monthly income, right? So considering these factors and he has got a hefty amount so he has got some lump sum amount that he wants to put in some safe scheme right so here investing into riskier assets does not make any sense so investing into foreign stocks would be too risky for him forex trading no, uh, not appropriate because too risky apart from that his friend mr mishra advised him to invest into penny stocks so penny stocks they are not credit worthy refers to smaller companies credit worthiness is totally doubtful although have the capability to provide higher uh, very high returns but similar is the level of risk so not suitable for mr sharma because he wants something safe right because he wants a regular monthly income up after that, if we talk about the reverse mortgage plan, reverse mortgage plan undoubtedly meant for senior citizens, but reverse mortgage plan needs the person to be a property owner and we are nowhere mentioned that Sharma owns a property, right? So considering all these uh, conditions, the best plan he can go for is the annuity plan. Now talking about annuity plan, so it's a very simple plan in which if you have a lump sum amount, you give that money to the company <coughs> and that company is going to use your money. After that, you can uh, set the terms and conditions uh, and according to the amount that you give and according to, the, uh, to your age, the person who is seeking this plan, they decide on a particular amount that they are going to provide you with every month right so obviously they are going to provide you with uh, provide the person the investor with some kind of return because they are using that lump sum amount that the person is providing the company right so company gets to use the 
uh, lump sum amount that they can put into different avenues uh, they usually do not invest such money into very risky assets they try to manage it uh, on a judicious level and they are going to provide this person the investor in our case mr sharma with some fixed amount of let's say they decide that okay mr sharma is going to be provided 20 000, 25 thousand per month let's say he has got an amount of 50 lakhs he invests 50 lakhs into a scheme and he gets rupees 25000 every month right so this can be an annuity plan so uh, the terms and conditions can differ from plan to plan basically if the investor wants they can invest the money in one go like if mr sharma has 50 lakhs he can invest this money in one go or they can or he can invest it into a series of payments right and then he can uh, sit and decide that whether he wants quarterly pay payments or monthly payments right so whatever are the terms and conditions can be tailor made okay now what is an annuity contract between insured and an insurance company in which payment and return receive regular payment and in return receive so see insurance company in which there is a payment in which the insured has to make a payment and in return they are receiving regular disbursements beginning either immediately or at some point in future so if it's an old person if we consider mr sharma he might since he is retired he might need immediate payments right he might need this 25000 to come within next 6 months right but if there is there is a young person who is still working uh, and he is planning for retirement then they can be possible so let's say that if there is a 40 year old person who is thinking of saving for retirement so from the age of 40 to 60 that person can make payments in a series of uh, in 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 a in a series and after the age of 60 that is after the after the after 20 years have passed payments can start for that particular person right so depends upon the uh, depends upon many factors right so can be immediate or some point in future so goal of annuity is to provide a steady income so safety is important steady income typically during retirement aspects of an annuity can be tailor made to the needs of buyers right if we consider types immediate annuity plan no accumulation phase plan starts working right from the vesting phase so two phases are there accumulation and vesting so accumulation is the phase in which the investor is making payment to the company that okay you take my money now and when i will need it in future when i'll be retired then give it back to me right so accumulation phase is when the insured is providing money to the company and investing opposite happens the company provide money to the insured right so investing is the period when the person is taking benefit of this particular plan so uh, in case of mr sharma there is no accumulation period because he wants income to start immediately and uh, he is agreeing to pay a lump sum he is agreeing to make a lump sum payment but just as i told you if there is a 40 year old person there can be an accumulation phase of 20 years from the age of 40 to 60 when that person is working and after 60 the vesting period can start right so immediate annuity plan and deferred annuity plan pension plan in which annuity starts after a certain date can be further divided into accumulation and vesting right so the person can decide that whether they want payment for a limited tenure or for the rest of their life but if they choose for the rest of their life the entire lifetime the payments can become smaller in amount because obviously they do, you don't know how many years that person is going to live right so this is annuity okay so guys these were the five questions for today and uh, before ending the session i would like to take some doubts okay in, in yesterday's video we discussed the difference between tokenization and encryption okay a person say okay there was a comment that that was not clear the table the tabular difference so here you can see the zoomed versions i hope this is clear and uh, readable so this is encryption this is tokenization if you want you can take screenshots for future use right or for making your own notes i hope this is perfectly readable encryption and tokenization right 
and I would like to take some other doubts. Okay, there was a question by Shreyas and Shreyas says that if central bank cuts rate and banks do not cut their interest rates, uh, which banks often do take out, take their time to cut, then is it still a liquidity trap? See, Shreyas, we define liquidity trap by a situation where people are holding cash and they are not spending their money, right? So if this is leading, see, obviously, if banks, if central bank cuts the rate and commercial banks, they do not transmit this rate cut, then the cost of borrowing is not going to reduce substantially. That is not going to incentivize people to spend. So depending upon the situations of the economy, if the, if this is making the borrowers not buying, not buy the uh, loan or not take the loan, then this might, this can be one of the factor to, uh, which leads towards liquidity trap if the banks they are not able to transmit the rate cut within within a set time frame right so this can be one of the factor depending upon the situations but let's say if the the demand for loans is high and credit is still uh, being taken uh, borrowers are taking loans then then there might not be any situation of liquidity trap right so transmission undoubtedly can be one of the factors okay Oh, and there was another doubt by Namrata Shivastav. So uh, she wanted me to explain all the options when we talked about swing trading, right? So swing trading explained in that video. Day trading happens when one person who is taking a position on one day has to complete or square up the position on that particular day only, right? That is why it is called day trading that you are completing your position within a day. The difference between swing trading, day trading that was discussed elaborately in that video. After that, whale trading that has already been discussed in one of the video. Whale trading means when one huge sized investor changes the course of market by buying or selling the securities basically. Uh, one uh, big investor, one institutional investor try, try, tries to manipulate the market. Bogus trading, uh, enter into, entering into trades which are not real just for fulfilling specific purposes or just for showing them, right? So bogus trade which are not real. Bull trading when, uh, when uh, an investor trades with a bull sentiment, they think that they expect that market is going to rise. That is why they buy and buy and buy and not think of selling, right? After that, there was a question by Janki. Janki was asking, just give me a minute. Okay. Janki asked that in reflation phase, in reflation phase, if the government and the reg regulatory bodies pump money into the economy, is there, is, is, would it lead to liquidity trap or not? Okay. See, you're right that in reflation phase, government pumps money into the market to boost the economy. It can lead to a liquidity trap if government is unable to make people spend. So I think I'm getting a lot of doubts about liquidity trap. So guys, do try to understand liquidity trap is characterized by a situation where people are not spending. Even if they are having money, they are they are keeping the money stacked in their homes rather than uh, putting it out into circulation. So see if government, but if government is pumping money into the economy it is actually trying to make people invest or it is trying to put some money into hands of people so that they can exit the phase of deflation so if they are able to do so if they are able to make people spend then they will not lead into a, a, a end up into a liquidity trap but if these measures also they do not make the people spend then there might be a liquidity trap right so i think in these type of questions we have we can have different situations different possible situations depending upon what happens or uh, what is the result of a certain action taken by the government right so guys these were the doubts and i'll see you in the next session till then you take care of yourself take care of your health keep your studies going on and keep mentioning your doubts in the videos i'll try to take them as soon as i can and thank you for being here